All right, to get our digital coloring started, remember we have what's called the digital coloring sandwich. This is in a raster program, this is in Photoshop. We have two layers that I call the bread layers. We have the black bread on the top, which is our vector line art as a smart object, and we lock it. We never want to accidentally rasterize that. And we have a blank white layer at the bottom that we lock that we never want to accidentally paint on, right? Because it's a spot illustration. It's not going to have a background. So now we need the layers in between. One of these layers is my reference image where I might steal color from. You can have as many references as you like, but I like to collapse them, merge them all into one layer, and I'm going to lock that. But this layer, I'm going to mark it yellow, like cheese, right? This is going to be my flat, I'll make it all capital so you can see it, flat local color layer. This is the first step in all digital coloring. So looking at those slides, just to make sure you understand, this is not flat color. This is flat color. This is flat color. This is flat color. It's one color for each shape. This is flat color, right? And we're doing flat local color. We do not need to do the crazy flatting colors. But if you have no idea what your local colors can be, you can start with crazy flatting colors. So I'll show you that. So how does crazy flatting color work? Well, if you look at the top and you're in the default view in Photoshop, you'll see swatches on your color scheme. And in your squatch, uh, swatches, you'll see various versions, right? So you'll have RGB, you'll have CMYK, you'll have pastels. I like to use these pastels for my flatting colors because they're really not, not close to any colors I usually use. And they're very distinct from each other. So this is how I would do flatting color. I use my magic wand and I set it, set it to contiguous and I set it to a tolerance of 32, which is the default in Photoshop. So remember the magic wand selects pixels that are similar to where you click. I'm going to click on, this is what's new. I'm going to click on my black bread layer. Even though it's locked, I can still make selections from it. And I'm going to select on the shape that I want to color, not the lines, the shape. So let's say this little burst here. You see I select on it because I have a contigu contiguous check. It selects only the pixels contained within those lines. Then I move to my flat color layer, which is the only layer that's unlocked, the only one I can actually paint on. And then I move to this tool, which we have not used before, which is a really basic digital art tool. It's called the paint bucket. You'll find it underneath the gradient. Shortcut for it is G. Can hit the G key until you get to it. Okay, now with that paint bucket tool, I'm going to hold down option. When I hold down option, notice how my cursor changes from a paint bucket to what's called an eyedropper. I could also use the eyedropper tool, but that just is more steps. So whenever you're in Photoshop, you can hold down option to steal colors from Photoshop. So from my reference image, like if I like that yellow, if I like this red, then I can fill that in. If I like this blue. But if I'm doing flatting colors, I'll just choose something from here. So maybe that. Right. Next, what does this actually look like? Well, this is my blank white layer on the bottom. On top of that is my color layer, which is the cheese right, of the sandwich. It's just a, a floating shape of color. Then I have my references. Then I have my black line art on top. So then I hit Command D to deselect. I go back to my line art layer. I go back to my magic wand and I select the next thing. And then I go to my flat color layer. I go to the paint bucket and I'm going to pick another color and then drop it in. Command D, go back to the line art magic wand. This is if all of your shapes are contained, right? And you can make pretty short work of it. 
For instance, I can do this kind of thing if all my shapes are contained. I can select inside all of them. I'm just using the magic wand with shift and clicking inside each of these shapes. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my flat local color layer and I'm just going to drop in with the with the paint bucket tool and now it will color in all of them. So now I hit Command-D. Now here's the beautiful thing about having contained shapes. I can click with the paint bucket on any one of these and fill them in with a different color. So fill that in with green. Fill this in with pink. Fill this in with the red. Fill this in with the yellow. Fill this in with the green. Right. Fill... Let's see, these in with the blue. It's right here. It's underneath the eraser, and it's underneath the gradient tool. You can use G as your shortcut. Okay, so now you're seeing my cheese layer, right? With the black line art, it makes a lot more sense. But I have this one shape that's not contained. And so if I try to select that with my magic wand from my line art layer, the hand, because the hand is open, you see how it selects the whole background. And then if I try to fill that on my flat local color layer, it fills in everything, which is not what a spot illustration does, right? I don't want a background. So what do I need to do? I'm going to do Command Z. What I need to do is actually use my lasso, right? And I can do this a few different ways. The difficult way that most of my students do it, because that's what they're used to doing, is going to their line art layer, using their lasso, and then just drawing within the line with the lasso. So if it's not a contained shape, this is how you have to fill it. I'll show you an easier way, but this is the first way that students tend to think is the best because they haven't had my class yet. But this makes some sense, right? Just like cutting stained glass to go into a window, you can cut out a shape that you want to go behind your line art, and as long as you're making that shape fit underneath your line art, you can go to your flat local color layer, you can fill it in. Let's pick an orange, right? I'll do a darker orange here. And then it will work. Right? You just cut out your own shape. Notice how this shape is not as clean as all of the other ones. The way I think you should do it is this way. Let me get rid of that. Let me deselect. I think you should choose the color you want to fill this with and then use your paintbrush. But you want to make sure your paintbrush is 100% hardness. Right? Just a standard paintbrush. Always nice if it's pressure sensitive. Then you simply draw the edge that will contain the shape with your color. Do you guys see that? Then what you do is you make, you select that line, Command J, this is seems complicated, and then you're going to Make a duplicate of your line art, and then you're going to merge that with your line. Right? So we have this shape now. What is that helpful for? You basically make a copy of your line art, and then you clean it up, right? By containing with color all the shapes that are not contained. That way, you can use your magic wand on that, even though it's rasterized. Then go to your local flat color and fill it in. And that will give you cleaner shapes overall. Does that make sense? Just tell me it makes sense. Make me feel good. All right. So 
these are not my flat local colors. These are my flatting colors, right? These are the colors that don't really make any sense, but they make it really easy for me to choose colors that do make sense. Because now everything is filled in. But is everything filled in? Aha! Uh -huh. It actually isn't, because my background for a spot illustration can be white, but what if it's on a dark surface? It could also be middle gray. So at this stage, it's good to put in three backgrounds. It can also be, I'm just making duplicates of my white background and then filling them, edit fill, with black and middle gray. So you can see that on black, I still have to choose a color for my highlights, right? And so I'm going to do that. How do I do it? I go to my vector line art. I use my magic wand. Because I want these all to be the same, I can hold down shift to select all of them. All these empty spaces. And then I'm just going to use a really bright color. If I want to pick my own color, I just double click here and I can pick a really light pink, right? And then use my magic wand, go to my flat local color layer and put that in. Okay, so now I've got all my flattings. So this isn't flat local color, this is flatting. Now I want to duplicate that and I want to turn this into the cheese I want, not just a variable cheese tray of all the options. I want it to be the cheeses I want, I want to eat. So now this is, I'm going to change these into flat local color, even if some of them are the same. So this is the difference between the images in this slide. between flatting colors, which are all about being distinct from each other, easy to select, and local flat color. I use this example because the local flat colors are pretty boring. They're all really similar. But these were used in order to select these. So now I'm the colorist. I'm actually getting paid a lot of money. And now I think, OK, I'm not just going to use regular swatches and palettes. I'm going to use inspirations that I like. And I like the idea of the blues and the reds overall, but I want the reds to be in certain places. So I'm just going to use my magic wand, not my magic wand, I'm sorry, I'm just going to use my paint bucket and my option key to turn it to my eyedropper. And I'm going to choose this really bold red and I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to choose that really bold red and put it right here. I'm going to choose this bright yellow with my option key and put it right here. I'm going to choose this orangey yellow, put it right here. I'm going to choose white because white is also a choice you would make, even though it's not a color, it's a value. And then I might decide, you know, I want to push that white a little bit more grayish. So maybe this one. These are called chromatic grays. Gray with color in them. <laughs> and sometimes I might need to customize the color I choose, right? And I want it to look good on all backgrounds. So I'm thinking I actually want the orange for this. Now for the little cloud behind, let's go with a different chromatic gray. So I'll go with kind of a bluish chromatic gray. And then for the hand and the fingers, I can make that a little bit more neutral looking, inspired by rutabaga. And then maybe warm that up a little bit. And then for these fingers, let's make that a little bit brighter. Boom, boom, boom. Right. And this finger and this finger. And then for the handle of the megaphone, notice how that's not contained. So how do I fix this? Well, remember the 